Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome in. Okay, um, so we can go ahead and get started. So this is the August Open Ed 21 community meeting. Um, the very first thing is today's agenda. We have a few things uh, mainly focused on strategic planning and the strategic vision discussion. Um, we have Minty set up, which we'll uh, have for you to be able to respond during strategic planning as well as in the beginning for a few icebreakers. Um, a quick operations update just to catch everyone up to speed uh, and we'll go straight into strategic planning. So first things first, uh, if you want, go ahead and open up a separate browser to set up your Minty. This is how you'll be providing feedback during the meeting. So um, take your time to go ahead and use the QR code as well here or the code, which is 33784289. Oh, I love that, Jeff. Um, well, tell Rocket I said hi. <clears throat> okay, um, if everyone is all set up, I can move to the next slide. So where are you joining from? Rhode Island. Whoa, Texas, Illinois, North Dakota, Edmonton, of course, of course. Alabama. I went through Alabama on my way to uh, Virginia. Did a cross country trip. New York, Georgia. Yep, passed by a corner of Georgia as well. Quebec. I love that Texas is front and center. <laughs> okay, um, great. That's a great. Next, all right, next. So this one's a little fun. What is your dream summer vacation? Oh, I know who put that one, Iceland. Mountains, ooh, Switzerland, yes. Don't know if anyone's into um, sea dramas, the Chinese dramas, but, oh, okay. actually that was a K-drama, sorry. Crash Landing on You. In a portion filmed in Switzerland, and I was like, oh my goodness, it is just so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Iceland sounds good. <laughs> oh, anywhere with the beach. Now I can't tell if that is that emoji is part of that one or that's just a separate emoji, just a drink emoji. <laughs> Canadian Rockies. Yeah, Haley, um, who I, I work with very closely, uh, is in Canada and she sends us these nature photos. And I'm like, wow, like Canada is just gorgeous. A COVID free utopia. Yeah. Okay. hundred percent agree with that. Okay. This is great. Dream summer vacation. All right. And we were moving on to an operations update. Um, and so Nicole will take it from here. All right. Um, Hello, everybody. Nicole Allen from Spark on the steering committee. Uh, since we hold these meetings every month, and for those that are joining us for the first time, we just like to give a quick overview of how the conference is organized and uh, what to expect for the upcoming conference this fall. So the Open Education Conference has been around. This will be the 18th year. At the end of 2019, the conference transitioned to a, a two-year organizing structure supported by four organizations shown on the next slide. And the, Winnie, can you move the slide? Thank y'all. <laughs> uh, so that's OpenStax, Spark, the organization I'm with, uh, the University System of Maryland, Kerwin Center, and the Colorado Department of Higher Education. And with the uh, conference over the last two years, the charge that these organizations took on was to support the conference through a transitional period in 2020 and 2021 uh, toward moving the conference to full community governance in uh, starting in 2022. 
And the, the dual focus of our work has been organizing the conferences while also allowing space for a strategic planning process to take place, which we'll hear about uh, later on in today's conversation. So the steering committee is, is the, organ, uh, I guess, group that's running the meeting today. Uh, but on the next slide, you'll see information about the other committees that are part of this process. Uh, there's actually uh, over 100 people that have been involved in uh, from volunteering on proposal reviews and, and working on the various committees uh, that are part of this. And uh, we're just incredibly grateful to all of the community members that have helped shape uh, the, the character of this year's conference. It's made, uh, uh, made last year's conference a really special event, and it's going to make this year's conference uh, even better in new ways. So I uh, just want to acknowledge all of the great committees. You can see more about the people who are on them in the link that Aisha just put in the chat. So moving on, uh, just quick logistical updates on the 2021 conference. Uh, it's going to be held on October 18th through 22nd of this year, which is just over two months away. It's hard to believe that. Uh, it is going to be a virtual conference. And uh, most of the schedules or live sessions are gonna be scheduled uh, during North American business hours uh, uh, centered on um, East Coast time, but the, uh, there will be lots of pre-recorded content and other activities happening before and after hours to engage people all around the world. And registration is open. Uh, the rates are set the same as last year at $75 uh, for standard registration and $25 for students, and uh, that's US dollars. And the registration process also uh, welcomes organizations or, or uh, system offices or states to contact us about group uh, invoicing for registration. If you have a larger group, we don't have group rates, but we're happy to uh, give you a, a, disc, a, a code that you can use to register. All right. So I'm going to hand it over to David to talk about the scholarship process. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I would be remiss to start off without acknowledging the uh, cats next to me that have snuggled in. Uh, we have Lucy over here in her very famous open education sweater and matching button. And then Ziggy. I saw the call for the rocket cam, so I thought I had to do that just to make sure that everybody knew there is more than one open ed animal. Rocket is pretty pretty tight up in, in the fabric, but we also got Lucy. We got to put some respect on the cat. Uh, where's the hoodie? It's, it's on it right now. It's this one. We actually um, re-embroidered it too to add the, um, the wording to be a bit more solid too, so it's like even more customized. Uh, but Delving into the meat of the agenda, we got the scholarship process. Nicole mentioned that registration is going, and if there is a barrier to access, if there's a barrier to engaging in the conference because of that registration fee, there is a scholarship process available. It's open right now. Uh, you, should, you should be able to see the chat for the link for that. And anybody who might be prevented from taking part in the conference because of cost is highly encouraged to apply. That includes students, international participants, uh, international participants, people without institutional funding, anybody who would face some form of barrier. Oh, that looks like Rocket's very excited to join the community call. <laughs> um, but the thing is, the priority deadline for the scholarships is today. So that's the priority deadline. You can still apply after today, um, but if you apply today, your application will be prioritized. So apply as soon as possible. The priority deadline is today. Now, alongside the scholarship process, we also have a programs update, which is fantastic to see. See the proposal review process as actually completed with more than 100 people involved in the reviewing. So just a quick second round of applause for everybody who participated in that. I know there's countless hours, lots of work on, from all of the volunteers and all of the uh, committee members. So snaps to that. Thank you for everybody for participating in that. We have actually accepted over 200 sessions, and there's some really, really exciting topics. I know every year their proposal review process is one of my favorite things because it's just a fantastic way to build excitement about the process, about the committee, or sorry, about the, the conference, because you get all of the fun ideas, and it's honestly like Christmas morning where you get to see all the fun things and all the possible uh, conference sessions that happen. So the program itself will include both live and pre-recorded sessions. So there's going to be a mixture of both, which is really good if you want to 
engage with some and there's some that you can kind of put off to the side and watch later at your own time during the conference. So that'll be really useful to be able to have that flexibility there. And we also have uh, updates on our keynote uh, line, our keynote lineup and our, our full schedule. Those will be coming in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, there's going to be some some pretty fun big announcements around there. So that's kind of the main update for the program right now. Ex uh, keep an eye out in the next couple of weeks for keynotes as well as the full schedule. And thanks all for coming today. I'll pass it off to Haley for some strategic planning updates. Sure. Thank you so much, David. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to follow up uh, cats and sweaters, but I will do my best to uh, present something interesting to you all today. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Haley. I am an open education court or uh, project manager here at Spark. Um, so I've been helping out with uh, mainly the strategic planning process uh, side of the um, uh, work that we're doing here. Um, so yeah, very excited to give a really quick update on uh, what we've been working on and we have something very exciting to share with you today. So we'll head to the next slide. Um, I guess before I get into uh, our exciting uh, uh, announcement, um, I guess just a background on the strategic planning process and committee in general. So um, we've been uh, formally uh, the strategic planning committee for uh, a few months now and, and really um, diving deep into answering this question of, you know, what's going to happen to the conference after uh, this two year commitment um, comes up that, that the uh, interim organizing partnership has taken on. So um, obviously, as we come up on open ed uh, 21, um, that will mark the second conference that um, this body in its current form um, will be carrying through and uh, we're currently engaging with the community to help us figure out what's going to come next. So um, throughout all of this, our goal that has been centering us in our work um, is just, you know, our, our intent to build a sustainable and, and really truly community governed conference um, that centers the values of diversity, equity and inclusion. So that's been at the heart of, of everything we've been working on over the past few months. So. Um, in light of that, we're very excited to be able to share sort of the first product um, of this work, and that is our draft strategic vision. Um, so this has been developed by the Open Ed Strategic Planning Committee um, in partnership, uh, you know, with our, our consultant that we've been working with, but also drawing upon um, feedback that's already been given to us by the community, either through these community calls, um, through other, you know, feedback mechanisms at the conference, what have you. Um, so we're very excited. We've got um, a product that we think uh, is uh, is uh, going to be very exciting to be putting out for community consultation. So at this point, um, Aisha, if we could really quickly drop the link to the blog itself. Um, this document will sort of outline a little bit of the background. Oh, you've got it already, amazing. Um, background of sort of, you know, how this came about, um, some details on how you can get involved and a link to the vision itself, which we'll be talking about um, a little bit later today, so feel free to sort of peruse that. Uh, so what this document is, is it uh, outlines our proposed mission, vision, values, um, and approach to how we do the work. Um, it's intentionally, you know, a shorter, more concise document um, that uh, is going to be at the heart of everything that comes next. So everything um, when we're talking about, you know, operational structures or governance um, of the conference, all of that will be informed by sort of the shared values, vision, mission that we've um, articulated on this document. So it's extremely important um, that we uh, have as much community feedback uh, as possible uh, in order to have a product that's you know truly representative um, of the community that we uh, are doing our best to serve. Um, so that's open to you now. Uh, we'll go ahead to the next slide. So you'll have a couple of options um, to actually share your thoughts with us. Um, we've got uh, some asynchronous and synchronous options. So asynchronously, we actually invite you to comment directly on the draft itself. Um, and we've got a couple options for that. We do have a Google Doc where you can utilize the comment function. Um, and that is uh, linked um, on both the blog post and uh, sort of the consultation page on our website, which uh, there's links to the chat available um, links in the chat available now. Um, and then also using Hypothesis, which is um, actually a tool that I uh, hadn't used before this process, but that I think is so cool. Um, so if you are, uh, if you do have a Hypothesis account, you can actually comment directly on the text um, as it appears on the website. Um, so a couple options for you there. 
um, if you are the kind of person who wants to uh, sort of really dive into this um, with other people and, and chat it through, we are offering a few interactive sessions um, where you'll be able to, uh, you know, join us and, and share your thoughts verbally. We'll have somebody available to capture those and make sure they get shared with the committee. And I'll um, share those details in just a second. Um, but uh, uh, if you could just go back to the last slide uh, really quickly, I think there was something else. Oh, yes. Uh, the consultation period does close on September 3rd at midnight. So that's a Friday. Um, so you will have a few weeks. Um, to sort of uh, chew on this a little bit, think about it, um, and, and share your comments with us. And now we can go ahead. <laughs> um, so who can participate? Everyone. Um, we, you know, we, um, like I said before, the more input that we have, the more that this is really going to be reflective um, of the entire community. Um, so, you know, it's really important to us that we have um, folks from all different sorts of professional roles, backgrounds, geographic locations, you know, what have you, um, everyone who's interested in this work, you know, we really invite to feel empowered to be a part of the process and um, participate however they can. So um, yeah, definitely feel welcome. We'll move ahead. Um, here's the details for the interactive sessions. We will be doing um, a little bit of sort of Mentimeter first reactions. I know not everyone will have had a lot of time to really um, fully dive into the draft uh, as we sort of just shared it with you. Um, but this is just sort of meant to get you thinking. Um, and then if you want to dive in deeper, um, encourage you to attend one of these sessions. We've intentionally sort of held them at different time uh, zones, uh, time frames to accommodate people in different um, geographical areas. So hopefully there is one in there that will work for you. So as you go through the doc, um, just a couple questions to sort of prime. Uh, you and think about, you know, what is it that uh, we're really looking to get to the bottom of. Um, so first of all, like I mentioned, the document is relatively concise. Um, is it uh, clear? Does, um, does everything come across properly? Do you have um, enough context to understand, um, you know, whether or not this accurately captures the values and goals that we all hold as a community? Um, and then is there any sort of important themes that are missing or underemphasized um, through this? Great, uh, so at this time, um, I'll uh, sort of hand things over to Lee Miller, who's a member of our uh, strategic planning committee and who's been, um, you know, an incredible um, sort of uh, advocate throughout this process um, to sort of go through some preliminary discussion questions um, and I'll be available to, to answer any questions as well. But um, Lee, why don't you take it away? Awesome, thank you, Haley. So like Haley said, we understand that you guys may just be seeing this for the first time, but we did wanna go ahead and just get some initial reactions and just go ahead and do some prompting questions. So the first one is what are some immediate reactions to the draft um, strategic vision. And we can pause here for just a second. So you do have a few minutes um, to look at, and then you can just drop in your comments into the Mentimeter. Perfect. Yeah, thanks everyone. It's a, we intentionally wanted to leave uh, sort of a long, um, uh, you know, feedback process to let everyone really think about this. It's, it's really an important question. Like these are the um, sort of foundational documents that'll be carrying us through the next chapter of the conference. So it's been a very exciting uh, process to be a part of. Um, MVP. <laughs> Thank you, <Sarah. laughs> Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Great, okay. I think the process by itself has just um, even helped identify and just be able to actually articulate what some of those are in terms of, you know, in line with values um, as a kind of a collective, so that's great. It's absolutely makes it powerful. become more global, multilingual. Mm. Great, yeah, this is all awesome feedback. Okay. 
Well, perhaps we'll move along. We've got a couple questions just to sort of go a little bit more uh, in depth. Okay. Oh, opening up for comment, much appreciated, right? <laughs> Okay. So yeah, if we want to go ahead and go to the next question. Thanks everybody for your feedback. So what do you enjoy about the draft? Is there something specific that really stands out to you? Um, I think a few may have been commented um, earlier, but concise. Clear. Yeah, something that we worked on as a committee going through just different um, sort of versions and drafts was a sort of an exercise of like, okay, what are some awards we can give? What are some things we like, we really enjoy? Um, and then what are some things we might change? So being sure to sort of take those two things hand in hand. So we'll get into the second half of that question uh, after this, but. Uh, just noticing there's a comment in the chat. Um, so if you're if you're on Mentimeter on a device, um, there may be a little um, flag sort of at the top of the screen saying to you can move to a presenter slide. That may be able to help you along. And it's good to hear. Seems like a strong foundation. Um, Thank you, that's encouraging. Yeah, that's definitely a goal. Hey. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the next question. All right, and by the way, you can still keep um, answering those questions, right, Haley, outside of just this presentation. Is that still correct, like it was in the other community? meetings? Uh, sorry, Lise, so you, this link will be open for a little while afterwards? Is that what you yes. mean? Yes. Uh, I believe so, but we could definitely yes. um, ensure that yeah. that's the case. People are able to go back and keep filling stuff up. Okay, all right. So yeah, just keep that in mind um, that you guys can definitely continue if you do have other additional comments. Uh, but the next question is, what would you change about the draft? I see some of you have already um, added so is like adding context um, translation so the multilingual piece. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great suggestion. You have a you have a good point. Open education by itself is not um, defined, and links to other documents. Add voice and author authorship. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So def differentiating open ed, uh, open education from open educational resources, a couple notes about defining open education, some links, uh, additional context, totally. Um, yeah, these are all great observations. Um, would definitely welcome, you know, if you have sort of uh, more like specific items you want to comment on, um, please do, you know, go ahead and, and do that in the draft. But uh, of course, there is, you know, quite a bit of time left. Great. Okay, thanks, everyone. We'll go ahead and go to our last question. What else should we keep in mind as we go about the consultation process? Yeah. So I think just, you know, uh, we've got, we sort of set up this consultation process based on, you know, some questions that we asked at the last community meeting. 
um, this question is just more to hear your feedback about process. Um, is there anything else that we could do to sort of um, more accurately, you know, capture community voice or any recommendations you have for us as we uh, sort of navigate this for the next few weeks? Avoiding group thinking. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs> Reaching out to learners for feedback. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's something that's been really top of mind through the process. How do we engage um, our learners? <clears throat> Being open to outsider opinions, uh, OE people can be uh, insular at times. And time frame makes it hard. Would you mind dropping in the chat what you mean by time frame makes it hard? Are you talking about? Unless you want to keep yourself anonymous, and then that's fine. Right, yeah, to return to school in the fall. Okay. okay. Great, okay. <laughs> okay. And so just remember, this is open. Um, there's a lot, he went across a lot of different opportunities for you guys to engage with this document. We'd love to hear more feedback, um, but I'll go ahead and I believe pass it over to Tiffany to close us out. Okay, so I'm sorry, right as you said that I put something in my mouth, so. <laughs> um, okay, so our next meeting is on September 10th at 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, don't forget to follow us on social media. Um, so it's still at Hey Open Ed for all of the accounts. And then our official hashtag, hashtag is hashtag Open Ed 21. So if you're not already following us, please do. <clears throat> and I'm going to put the link here for September's meeting in the chat. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, like I said, if, you, if you're not already following us, please do, we'll leave this up for just a second, but um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much, everyone. And uh, yeah, like I said, um, more, if you're interested in chatting further, do attend one of those sessions. Um, and we look forward to getting your feedback. Thanks so much. Thank you.